project, and today I'm at Mass Academy on Key Biscayne, a beautiful barrier island off of the coast of Miami, and I'm really excited to present a lecture about global warming and sea level rise to the students here. We're going to present about 1,500 students in total, and these are some of the best and brightest students in all of South Florida. Mass Academy has a STEM-focused curriculum, and that, in addition to the fact that the campus sits right on Biscayne Bay, makes this a wonderful opportunity to engage with kids and talk about what's happening to our planet. These kids get it. They understand that our planet is warming, and they see the evidence of sea level rise right here in their community with their own eyes. It won't be long before my generation, including the kids here at Mass Academy, inherit the climate change crisis and it's going to be up to us to solve this global problem. So I'm super excited to be able to engage with these very bright students, and I hope that you enjoy watching some of the presentation, and especially the excellent questions that the kids will most certainly have throughout the day. Come on inside and settle in for a new Sink or Swim lecture, and remember that together we can solve our planet's climate crisis. Good morning, guys. How are you doing? Great. Good. Great. Awesome. Okay. So before I start, I'm going to ask you a question that is completely unrelated to climate change. Are you ready? Okay. Who here has ever heard of Jack Black? Yeah? Okay. Have you seen any movies with him? Shout them out. Yeah? School of Rock? Yeah? Okay. So I'm going to show you a video, and it has Jack Black in it. I want you to meet my protege, Delaney. Hello, Hi. Delaney. I've heard yes. so much about you. Have a seat. Delaney Reynolds, 16-year-old budding scientist, somebody who found out about climate change and sea level rise, and she's really engaged and she's really interested and she wants to tell other kids about it. Is it true? I've heard that you are a student of climate change. Yes, that is true. That's very impressive at your Thank age. You. I go into classrooms and community centers and I speak to anyone that's going to listen about the problem. This graph shows predictions for sea level rise, and I show them real science from IPCC reports, Union of Concerned Scientists, NASA, and they get it. A message of hope, a message of solutions, and the surprising thing was it came from a kid. Today, I'm going to talk to you guys about my passion, which is global warming and sea level rise. So it seems like that's the trend with the youth movement, yeah. it's like, more and more people accepting what's happening. We have to come together and decide whether we want to sink or swim. Is there gonna be a Miami when she grows up? Is she gonna be able to raise her family here? Is she gonna be able to live here? What if Miami can't be saved? Will you leave? If that does happen, then we're either gonna to have to get out or build up. But I actually have hope that that won't happen. We will be able to solve this problem. I think we have to solve this problem. 16 years old and so filled with promise and potential and hope. Have we given you hope? Yes, finally, I found some, some hope. We talked about hope, can we do this? And we came to the conclusion that, yeah, we can. We just need to get kids on board and we need to get our political leaders on board. So, have any of you guys seen Years of Living Dangerously? It's a TV show. No? Okay, you've seen it? Awesome. Okay, so I definitely encourage you to check it out. Season one is free on YouTube, the entire thing. And season two is still playing on National Geographic Channel. And you should definitely check out the Miami episode with Jack Black. And it also has Ian Summerholder and his wife. So it's really cool. <laughs> so as I said in the video, we need to get kids on board. So that's why I'm here today. I'm going to talk to you about climate change, sea level rise, and what we can do to help. So before I start, I'm a kid just like you. My name is Delaney. I love being outdoors. I love swimming. I love fishing. I love music. This is a picture of me with my favorite band. And I love sports. This is me playing basketball at my high school. Do any of you guys like music or sports? Yeah? OK. So I'm a kid just like all of you. Now before we start, I'm going to ask you guys a few questions. Have you ever heard of carbon dioxide? OK. What about global warming? Yes? Sea level rise? OK. What about SpongeBob SquarePants? OK. We're going to watch SpongeBob. I'm off to work at the Krusty 
crab, flying up patty and blabbity blab. Huh? That's new. Strange place to park a car. What's this for? <laughs> SpongeBob! You're wasting me precious carbon dioxide! Carbon dioxide? I'm pumping it into the atmosphere, boy. <laughs> Thanks to global warming, the temperature will soon go through the roof, and then we'll have an endless summer. Why do you want an endless summer, Mr. Krabs? So I can open my latest money-making venture, the Krusty Pool. But what about winter sports, Mr. Krabs? Ah, forget winter, boy. We're talking sun tanning, hanging tan, and swimming all year long. Ooh, the endless summer does sound fun. And profitable. Fun and profitable. Big business does it again. I just wish it could be the endless summer right now. Hey. Oh, umbrellas are three dollars, sir. Oh, what a bargain. I'll give you five. What the barnacles? It suddenly got very warm in here. Who turned up the heat? SpongeBob, what are you doing? Just throwing another tire on the fire for global warming, Mr. Krabs. Ah, hey, look, it's working. The entire town is heading this way to cool off. You mean pay off. Hurry, SpongeBob, fill the pool, fill the pool. Ah, I, I say. Have your money ready, folks. The line starts here. Where's everybody going? We're all moving north. We can't live here anymore. It's too hot. All we customers have moved to cooler climates. Look on the bright side, Mr. Krabs. There won't be a line to go in the pool. Ouch. Okay. Hi, guys. For those of you just coming in, my name is Delaney. I'm the founder of the Sink or Swim Project, and I'm going to talk to you guys about climate change, sea level rise, and what we can do to help. So as you guys just saw in the SpongeBob video, carbon dioxide is emitted from things like cars or boats or factories, which are all man-made items or places that man works in. So basically, carbon dioxide is emitted from man. This graph is a graph of our population. Can anyone tell me what our population is today? Yes, seven billion. Good job. Okay, so our population is 7 billion, and that's what this graph shows right at the end of the blue line. The red, orange, and the green lines are predictions for where our population could go. And in the extreme case of the red line, by 2100, there could be 16 billion people on our planet. That means more cars, more factories, and more carbon dioxide into our atmosphere. This is a picture of cars emitting carbon dioxide. All of that smoke is coming from the exhaust pipe. I'm sure you've seen it. That's what it looks like. This is a factory doing that as well. Have any of you guys seen a factory like this? Yeah? OK. So you've basically seen carbon dioxide. And what happens when this happens is carbon dioxide goes into our atmosphere. It warms it up, which warms up the ocean, which melts glaciers in Greenland and Antarctica, which adds water to our oceans, which causes sea level rise. So it's like a huge chain of events. So this is called the Keeling Curve, and it's one of the most important images in climate science. It illustrates the amount of carbon dioxide that's in our atmosphere and that it has been increasing steadily since the 1950s, at the beginning of this graph. At the start of the Industrial Revolution, scientists believed that there was about 280 parts per million of carbon dioxide in our atmosphere. By 1958, that had grown to 315 parts per million, right at the beginning of this graph. And all the way over here today, there's over 400 parts per million of carbon dioxide in our atmosphere, which is alarmingly dangerous. We've been able to scientifically measure the temperature of our Earth since 1880, the beginning of this graph. 2014 was the warmest year out of all of these years in history that we were ever able to record. 2015 broke that record. 2016 broke that record. So there's no debate that our planet is warming up. If you were to look at a thermometer, you would be able to tell that. So the temperature of our Earth is increasing, and there doesn't seem to be an end in sight. 
This graph is a combination of the last two graphs that you saw. So the bold line in the middle is the carbon dioxide, and the blue and the red is the temperature of our Earth. And as you can see, they're both trending upwards, just like the other two graphs. And the population graph was trending upward as well. Basically, all in the same trend. I don't think that that's a coincidence. These are definitely related. So can anyone tell me what these first two things are? Raise your hand. Yes. No? Uh, oh, yes. OK. Ice. Yes? Closer? Almost. Go over here. Close. Okay. So, you got it? Yes. Good job. Okay. So, this on the left is Greenland, and this in the middle is Antarctica. And we all know that this is ice cream. All of these things melt, except we all care about our ice cream melting, and that's what has to change. We have to care about Greenland and Antarctica melting as well. Satellite pictures of Earth first became available in the 1970s, and ever since then, the pictures that they have taken show that sea ice has been declining significantly. Scientists estimate that we are losing about 13% of all of the sea ice per decade since 1979. As our planet's temperatures rise, so do the seas. The ice melts, and it gets hotter each year. Glaciers and ice sheets are known as land ice, and they cover about 10% of the world's surface ice. The majority of this is in Greenland and Antarctica, like the graph shows. Satellites from NASA, America's Space Agency, illustrate a dramatic decline in this amount of ice year after year over the last decade. Recently, I had the pleasure of meeting an Eskimo elder from Greenland, and he told terribly sad stories about what is happening in his home in Greenland. He told stories about how the ice is melting, disappearing from the surface and going into the ocean. And he said that it's not stopping. And this has all happened over the course of his extremely long life. This is real, and this is happening today. This isn't a story, this isn't a graph, this isn't a chart. This is a real person whose story brought an entire room to tears. Think about that. Think about that what this man and his country are seeing is happening right now, and it's getting worse every single day. So this is a picture of a glacier in Alaska, and the words are weird, but this was taken in 1920, so it's in black and white because I didn't have color cameras. But I want you to look at all of the ice that's down here on the ground and all of the ice that's in the mountains. It's a lot of ice. Now, if we were to fast forward 25 year, 85 years into the future, this is the same glacier. All of the ice has basically melted, and this is because of climate change. So when the glaciers in Antarctica and Greenland melt, virtually all of that water goes into the ocean. NOAA and other scientific organizations have found that sea levels rose 1.7 millimeters per year between 1880 and 2011. And today, they found that seas are rising between 2.7 and 3.7 millimeters per year. That's a huge increase. Scientists are now concluding that seas are rising faster than they originally predicted. This is another sea level rise chart, and it shows us that within 45 years, by the time that I'm 60 years old, within all of our lifetimes, seas will rise at least two to three feet. And this is a very conservative estimate. Most scientists actually predict that it could rise six, seven, eight, nine, even 10 feet. So the question is, when is it going to impact us? Well, the answer is it already is. This picture was taken a couple of years ago on Miami Beach, and that's salt water. This is a picture from North Miami, and this actually isn't anywhere near the coast. Okay? This is more inland, and there's still water flooding the streets. This is a picture of a house. It's a regular house, regular street, and you can even see the drainage system here. This is the same house with the effects of sea level rise. So all of this salt water bubbled up through that drainage system and flooded the street and this man's driveway so much so that he was able to float in it. 
So some scientists suggest that we just build a wall around Florida, but unfortunately that won't work, and this is why. Florida is really unique, and we sit on top of this rock called limestone. You can kind of think of it like Swiss cheese because it has a bunch of holes in it. I have a piece, and I'm going to pass it around so you can see what I'm talking about. So as seas continue to rise, they're gonna come, it's going to come right up through this rock, through the holes, and it's going to flood us anyways. And it's not just a coastal issue because it's not just a coastal issue because of this, but it's also an inland issue as well. So we can't just build a wall around Florida. That won't work. Can anyone tell me what that blob is? OK, yes, it's an octopus. So this is a parking garage here in Miami. And that's salt water that flooded it. Rose up through a drainage system, so much so that an octopus was able to swim into the parking garage. So you know it's time to find solutions when an octopus can swim into a parking garage. I mean, come on. So these are two pictures of Florida. This is what Florida looks like today. If we were to look at a map, this is what we would see it as. This is how we know it. And this is what it's predicted to look like in 2100. All of those red dots are where the water is predicted to rise. So in this case, the Florida Keys are gone. The Everglades are gone. Miami Beach is gone. Key Biscayne is gone. Bless you. OK, calm down, calm down. So this is a satellite picture of Key Biscayne with a graphical projection from my friends at Coastal Risk Consultants. And it shows what will happen here in your community if seas rise three and a half feet, which is predicted to happen in all of our lifetimes. So the areas marked in red is where seas are predicted to rise and flood 75 to 100%. The dark orange is 50 to 75%. And the light orange is 20 to 25 percent. So the point is, the island right here, where all of you go to school and some of you might even live, like other places, including Miami Beach, the Everglades, the Florida Keys, are at dire risk, unless our generation solves this problem. So in the background here, this is a picture of the Amazon rainforest. And here in the middle, this is what's happening to it. Can anyone tell me what this is called? I saw you first. I'll give it to you. <laughs> so yes, this is deforestation. And deforestation is the cutting down of trees to make lumber for building houses and other buildings. And we all know that trees breathe in carbon dioxide. So some of the carbon dioxide that we put into the atmosphere, those trees are able to absorb. However, if we cut them down, they can't do that anymore. And if you cut down a bunch of trees, then they actually release all of that carbon dioxide that they have ever breathed in, creating what is kind of like a carbon bomb. So what can we do? How can we help? Well, we can take part in beach replenishments. We can replace the sand that's been washed away from the wind or rising seas. We can also take part in mangrove replantings. This is a picture of my brother and I doing it just a couple years ago. Another great option is solar power. Can anyone tell me how solar power works? and it goes down the metal strip into the cable, into a converter, and then it, and it, the electricity is used to power the house. Awesome. Okay, that was perfect. So he said that the sunlight goes into those blue things, which are called photovoltaic cells, and it goes into a converter, which creates electricity that we're able to use inside of our houses, inside of buildings. And the really cool thing about solar power is that once it's installed, it's basically free. Your electric bill goes down immensely. And the cost to install it is actually decreasing every day. So that's another great thing. I've also read reports that say that 50% of all of Florida's power needs could come from the sun by 2045 if we were to just start taking that goal seriously. That seems like a pretty manageable goal to me. So I say that we take the sunshine state of Florida and turn it into the solar state. So there are things that we can do. We do have options. Instead of using coal and oil and other fossil fuels, we can use wind power or hydropower or solar power. There are a bunch of options. 
Most experts, as I said, predict that all of Florida could be powered by 50% of solar power. So that's a great option. However, solar power probably won't power 100% of our electrical needs. So this is a picture of the shipping port power plant in Pennsylvania in 1957. It was the first nuclear reactor to ever supply electricity to an electric grid. The reason I'm showing you this is because nuclear power is probably going to have to, uh, have to play a huge part in the solutions of our future. The United States and other countries in the world are going to need to build new power plants that are based on thorium-fueled molten salt reactors. So what does that mean? These technology basically cannot have a meltdown and they only produce a fraction of the nuclear waste that is produced today in power plants such as the one on Turkey Point here in South Florida. So it's going to be up to you and I, our generation, to perfect these technologies so that we can stop our reliance on fossil fuels altogether. Another great way for you to become involved is to speak out about politics. This is me speaking at the Miami-Dade County Commission meeting in front of the entire commission and the mayor. I went because I was extremely upset that in 2015 and 16, the mayor didn't allocate any money towards climate change or sea level rise into his budget. So I wrote some blogs about it, and a lot of people read them, and they told me to go and ask the commission for money. So I did. That's what I did. And on the way there, in a furious rainstorm that had manhole covers lifting, that had manhole covers lifting up off of the streets, I wrote a speech that I call Raindrops, and I'd like to play that for you. Hi, my name is Delaney Reynolds. I go to Palmer Trinity School in Palmetto Bay. I'd like to comment on the budget and sea level rise. As I drove here, it was raining. And as it rained, I imagined that there were millions of raindrops falling from the sky. In fact, there probably were. And as I thought about coming here, those raindrops were a metaphor for your $6.8 billion budget. And I thought to myself that just one of those drops is equal to the small amount of money which you are allocating to in the budget towards mitigating sea level rise. First, there was little to nothing. Then, $75,000. And I think I heard today about $300,000 were allocated. I'd like to suggest that that's not enough, that our community and environment deserve more. And in fact, I respectfully ask that you increase this line item to $1 million, and certainly nothing less than $500,000. What I've not told you yet is that I am the founder of an educational initiative related to educating children about sea level rise, entitled Sink or Swim my website being MiamiSeaRise.com, and that through my work with this initiative, I can tell you that children, future voters, and their families, current voters, are deeply concerned about sea level rise. I implore you to show the world that Miami-Dade County is serious about sea level rise and dramatically increase your expenditure in this year's budget. We need to stop talking about it and start taking action to work together to address the catastrophe that our community faces. Thank you for your time and your consideration. Thank you so very much. So I'm pleased to tell you that, thank you. Thank you. So I'm pleased to tell you that as a result of people like me speaking up and out, the mayor actually increased the budget to $300,000 and created Miami-Dade County's very first chief resiliency officer. Later in the year, he actually increased the budget to $1.2 million. And the budget for this year is $1.7 million. So this is a great advancement. And it shows that even it shows that even children have a voice. And every single one of you can do what I did. So if all of the ice melts, where will all the polar bears go? Well, if you have your phones, I'm sure you guys do, right? You all have phones? OK. So I'm going to show you the links to my website and all my social media. If you follow me there and sign up for my blog, I'll give you a comic book today. This is a comic book that I wrote. It's called Where Did All the Polar Bears Go? And inside it, I talk about climate change, sea level rise, what's happening, more about solutions. And I also talk about where the polar bears might even go. So these are the links. That's my website up top, imecrise.com. And there's my Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. And this is what the website looks like, and right here it says sign up, that's where you sign up for the blog. So if you do that, you'll get a comic book. So thank you guys for being here today, I hope you enjoyed it, I definitely had fun. Thank you.
It's a beautiful day here in Key Biscayne and I had a great time with the students here at Mast Academy. I want to thank the school's principal as well as Michelle for inviting me and I want to thank all of the students. You all had amazing questions and in fact, once again, I had the pleasure of seeing the young people in my generation have the enthusiasm and especially the hope to know that we must solve the global climate crisis and that we can. It's really encouraging that every student that I saw today, almost 1,500 students here at Mast Academy, was hopeful and excited about the prospects that our generation can solve the climate change challenges that we face. And I look forward to working with these young people in the future because I'm also convinced that if we work together, we can and we will solve this problem. And as a matter of fact, today we actually even had an extra session with over 50 kids about how they can install a solar installation here at their school in the near future, which was absolutely amazing. They all had so many great ideas. We really have no choice in a place like Key Biscayne because if we don't solve it, it simply won't be here and that's not acceptable. So I hope that you will follow me at the Sink or Swim project where you can sign up for my blog at MiamiSeaRise.com. That's MiamiSeaRise.com. Sign up, contact me, let's collaborate. Let's work together to find a solution. Not just here for Key Biscayne, but for all of South Florida and for the rest of the world too. So I'll see you soon. Thank you.